Have you got your tea or water? It's water. I have changed my tradition today and I've got fruit juice. And we didn't even agree on that. Let's start with what I'm asking everyone. If you have any news or a project coming up. Are you making any landscape or Unreal Engine project? The period of time where I could just fool around with whatever I wanted has ended and April and May are going to be very hard on work. So I have like an anti-annonce. You're gonna rest? No, work. Please tell us about your nickname. The beginning of it is my last name, Ivanova. The middle part is my name and the end, R, means architecture. And it wasn't me, it was my classmate who came up with this. And my other friend had me registered on Instagram, so I had nothing to do with any of it. And the dash at the end was because this name was already taken. Yes, somebody called Belizar took my name. I had the same problem, I wanted to use Vlad Vies as my nickname, but it was taken, so... I had to put 14 at the end, my birthday. Some of us who's been following you for a while know where you're from, but some don't, so please tell us about where you're from and where you studied. And we're talking about just general education. I am from Russia, Krasnodar. But I wasn't born in Krasnodar, I was born 80 kilometers from it. I've been living here for seven years. I studied on a very weird faculty called Building Engineering, so it wasn't architecture or engineering. We were supposed to be professionals that can uh, draw a building and estimate it. And we studied both architecture and construction materials. And all of that stuff. Well, not stuff. I was a good student. But it was hard at times. So you've got higher education, right? Yes, I am both bachelor and a major. I got my major six months ago and I think it wasn't worth it. Tell us why. I thought it was a loss of time. At the beginning of my bachelor studies, I was thinking that I would absolutely go have a major. I started working as a visualizer since fourth year of my bachelor course. Back then I still hesitated if I'm going to be an architect or a constructor. And I kind of organically came into visualization, so I just spent two years doing my major, don't know why. I think in our sphere, and just in all of the spheres, there are two main professions that you can't do remotely, it's architecture and medicine. Tell us about your hobbies. 3D work has become my hobby and it's everything for me. Why? It can't be only visualization. I think many could get tired of architectural visualization, of interiors, of 3D work and move to something else. Somebody would grow into a designer or a photographer and I think I would just go deeper in that, but not just yet. So right now you don't see yourself as a designer or architect. 
No, and the further it goes, the more I realize it's not for me. That's why I'm saying that I wasted two years doing my major. Yeah, it would make more sense if you were going to become an architect. It would be probably better if you did a course specializing on visualization, right? Yeah, something like that. How did your path in visualization start? What were your first steps? If you study something connected to architecture, then you start doing your student projects. They didn't insist on using 3ds Max, but I had to. I wanted it. On the second year, we had a choice to either make a model of a building or make it using visualization. So I chose the second one. My first orders I got end of 2017 and beginning of 2018 I started working. They're saying you're very sweet and that you're a cool CJ artist. <laughs> Let's have our conversation first and you prepare your questions and in the end we will answer to all of them. Next question is going to be about parents. Uh, who are your parents and how did they affect your choices? Well, I just chose it myself. Nobody stopped me. And the reason why I didn't go to the architectural faculty was because to enroll you had to pass the drawing examination. And my faculty only had physics, and I chose physics. When I started working, my mom understood what I was doing very fast, and she supported me. It took a while for my dad until he stopped telling me with compassion that you studied so well, you have to be an architect, why are you doing this weird thing? Now they both understand. For all the questions you have for Lisa, if we don't answer them in our stream, you can ask them after our talk, we will have some time for them. So the second part, we're going to talk about professional stuff. How do you manage your work, your projects for your clients and for yourself? You've got commercial projects and you've also got projects for the soul. How do you manage your time? I sift out a lot of proposals. At some point I shifted to projects for single pictures. They don't take as much time. 
When it's a full design project, you're helping the designer to embody his whole concept. And it takes months. And if your client is a developer and he quickly needs a picture, it takes like a week. You've earned something and then you can do stuff for yourself. How do you manage the time? For example, for one space, you know it takes you two days, but how much do you actually put for your client? I look at the proposal and if I see that it will take me two days, I can tell that I will start Monday and I will send everything by Friday. But usually I send everything earlier. I set more time just to be safe. What do they say? Do they ever say it's too long? No, it's mostly for my clients that I've been working with for a long time. I don't have many new clients. I've been in freelance since end of 2019, so I had enough time to build a base of permanent clients. So all the clients you've got will agree to any time frames you set, as long as it's you doing their projects, right? Well, a week is not a long time. You know, for Russian clients it can be they want everything tomorrow. I have a client that I've been working with since 2018 and with his projects it's always quite fast. He's got perfect proposals. He sends me like pictures. I can send them to you. I would love to see it. It's not every client who would do this. Yeah, he's like an artist. Where did you get ideas for your personal projects, for your landscapes? It is my way not to burn out. If you do the same thing all the time, anyone would get sick of that. I understand people who need to earn money, they have families, they have kids. And doesn't matter if you're burned out, you have to earn. But if you've got a possibility to just create for yourself, then why not? How did you get the idea yourself to create your first landscape? Your works are like paintings, like an artist painted them. I think many would agree with me that your works look like somebody created them on a canvas. Each of my works has a micro story about that picture with a boat and a waterfall. It's very artistic. I made it for a contest that was held by a chaos group. It was my last year as a student and they held a student contest. For some reason I only knew about it three days before it ended and I didn't have time to finish it so I just sent it out like this. And in a year I sent it to one render challenge and it reached top 10 in there. And about the rest of my works, as I said, each of them just has a different story. But anyway, you didn't create them out of nowhere, you were inspired by something. No, I did them out of nowhere. I was just sitting and thinking, what do I create? And I created a waterfall. In my other work, I 
did a copy of a painting. I was walking through Pushkin Museum and I was looking at paintings. And I chose one and I copied it in my work. The other one where I drew Porsche and I tried to make it move using Unreal Engine. Was it the one you sent me where a car just falls down the mountain? Yeah, it was the one. Post it to your stories. With this car, I was just looking through my feed. And at that time, many of the artists were drawing cars. I sent that to my friend and I said, if I see one more car, I'm going to start drawing one myself. So I saw another render and I started to draw one. How about the one that has ice in the front? Don't know, I just collected some references. I can't really tell and I don't really like this work. That was the time I was testing a lot the world creator. If me or somebody else would want to make projects like you do, which programs should we use? For landscapes, it's World Machine, World Creator, Gaia. For me, Gaia has one. It's got like a node system, sculpting. For me, it's the most comfortable thing there is. Very comfortable to work with textures in it. And you can export it into 16K, 33K. For test work it's free, but you can only export your textures in 1K. I can't believe you're just randomly creating your works. Do you make sketches on like where everything would be in the picture? I do most of it in the process. There is no view or image of it in the beginning. When I studied architecture, they taught us to make a little sketch before you go to the big drawing. I thought that's how you work. Yeah, most of it I do in the process. And that forest with the dog that you made. I had lots of comments from people, they tried to guess what it is. Somebody saw a ghost, somebody saw a goose. In a weather like that, nobody walks a dog, so... You wrote once that you get inspiration from photography, from photography and from other artists too. I've heard many artists say that they get inspiration from photography, not from other renders. If you want to be closer to photorealism in your work, 
I don't quite agree. I think you can get a lot from other CJ artists' work. I've got a lot of favorite ones. If it's photos, it's photos of anything, interiors, landscapes, all together. So you're saying that both affect the work? When I listen to you, it seems that everything is so easy. When I look at your work, I think of how did you make this mountain? How did you make this water? Now we live in the most abundant time for learning. You can get information about any topic you want. Nastya is saying in the comments that it's talent. It's when you can make great work out of nothing. How do I hide? <laughs> People are saying you've got taste. Maybe your experience of traveling has played a role. Of you creating your works almost like automatically. Save them for later, or you'll get distracted and shy. Please tell us about main difficulties of when you're creating your work. Like what do we need to look at in the process? I think the most difficult part is to find time for everything you want. As I graduated, I didn't have that problem anymore because I didn't have to spend any more time on this. When I worked on my other computer, it was hard to work because it's like a render truck and it's better you not work on one of those. When I bought it in 2018, that was a mistake. Now I've got two. On one of them it's great to work and the other one is great for rendering. If you have AMD processor, it's so much better. Both for rendering and working. I've got Ryzen 3950X and it's very good for work. Tell us more about your computers. One of them is Ryzen, it's 128 megabytes of RAM. Second one is 64 RAM. Which one is better for your landscapes? So Creator Program works through the video card. Кстати, Гая, я не знаю, надо, гля... ну, надо, надо узнать, я не знаю, кстати. 
And I use distributed render. My two computers are like a render farm. And it works quite fast. Are there many resources right now where you can find information on these programs? A lot. And Russian ones? There is one guy that makes good lessons on the creator. And about Kaya, I saw two resources. One was good and the other one was very good. I can send them to you. You can learn it in a day. People ask why you have 128 gigabytes of RAM. Because the mod are better. Yeah, I decided to make it this big so that I never have to think about this. It's a good decision. I had 32 and I noticed that it wasn't enough for Corona Render, so I upgraded it to 64. And you've solved all of your problems just at once. People are asking a lot about Unreal Engine, so let's go. When have you decided to try it and how are you feeling about it? I decided to try because there were too many talks about it. Instead of collecting thousands of opinions, I just started learning it myself. In 2017, I studied at CJ Incubator School. Even before that, I knew how to visualize. When I started learning Unreal Engine, I went from zero. I also studied at Architech school and they were the only ones who had courses on Unreal. Lisa will leave this information in the comments down below. For the ones who start from zero, I very much recommend it. There are lots of lessons on Unreal for free that you can find, but the information is quite disordered. So if you're very new to this, you just won't be able to handle it. First, you need to get a base. So it's not that easy yet. The ones who have some experience in CJ won't have as many problems with that. It should be quite easy. What kind of advantages have you discovered in Unreal Engine? Is it really the future of visualization? It's a good question. If you create cinematics, which is more about advertisement, I think it will take a big part of the market because it's got a real-time render you don't have to spend hours on the render. Time taken by post-production moves to pre-production in the process. 
на какие-то вещи, возможно, он не нужен, если там совсем короткий ролик. And if you need to create something long, then I think it's really worth switching to Unreal Engine. Blueprint учить не обязательно, если вы занимаетесь синематиками. As I see it, Unreal Engine is something different. I think it's gonna just take its own place in the visualization world, and this place is gonna be big. And statics, as we make them, will stay on old engines because it's just simply comfortable. Unreal is challenging for statics at the moment because you can't move what you've built there. It needs hyper-realism and in real time you can't really reach it. It works like you can't move, uh, for example, a vase, you can't move it 5 centimeters. It can't work this way or you need to do it all over again. Who knows? Maybe I'm imagining, but I think render is becoming faster. And real time is becoming more realistic. Maybe they will meet in some other technology. So we can't speak for the far future, but in architectural visualization, I don't think so. It's been quite a while since first ones started making renders using it. And it's still with us. We had a discussion on the other stream about programs that can create images out of your thoughts. As in, your clients can draw what they want, what they see in their mind. But there's a thing about creativity, like your clients cannot know if this couch is going to match with these walls. And it's going to be like, my neighbor has this couch and these wallpapers, so I'm going to just imagine them. So I don't think we're going anywhere. For animation and cinematics, it's a really good choice because you don't have to wait for your render. It's all working very, very fast. It's a good question that now there are lots of requests on animation and VR. I made it for one of my clients. They built their project in the center of Berlin. They made a reconstruction of a building and they needed to show their showroom. It was a very important project for them, even though it looks quite simple. The clients that are big, I don't think they care about what you render on. I think right now it's not as great and as realistic as VR. It still looks a bit toyish. Do you have lots of proposals on animation? I get a lot of orders for animation. And very often I make a small part of it. For example, one of the developers is building a townhouse district and he will have promotion that is half video and half animation. And I need to only render 15 seconds of my part. Maybe show an interior of one of the houses or a bird. It's a very short part and a very popular kind of proposal. 
The ones that I make that are like fly through and it lasts a minute for one interior is quite rare because these kinds of things are not really popular. There's another question on graphic cards. How powerful does it have to be? In future, when we all move to real time and will render using RTX, then we will need a very powerful graphic card. I think the more powerful it is, the better. Just get as powerful one as you can afford. What are the downsides of Unreal Engine? I don't think there are any. If you're new to this, it's hard to merge interiors. But when you get used to it, it's totally fine. Does it have a lot of time to create an apartment and then to merge it with the scene? It doesn't take too much time, but it definitely does take some. One of my friends did make an apartment using Unreal Engine once. And he said, I'm never going back. He said it was horrible and that he spent too much time on it. I think he just needs to go and learn somewhere. It will save you time. At first, it's going to be very challenging. You won't be knowing what's going on. And then it becomes quite easy. And Real Engine is quite friendly for the users. So if you really need it, you'll get used to it faster. You said RTX graphic card is good and what about GTX? There are ways to work like that, there's reflection and all of the other tools. The RTX will help you to create more or less realistic reflections, so it directly affects the result. Then it's definitely better. There are so many questions, I think we should start answering them. I see them and I notice the most interesting ones. You can prepare your other questions for later and we will answer them in the end. And how about work with materials in Unreal Engine? I like it more than Corona or V-Ray. By the way, Corona 7 has good materials. Unreal has completely PBR material. You prepare maps for diffuse, for reflections, for normals. And it works quite fast. The work with maps is a bit different. How does Material Editor work? In 3ds Max we have simple 
One when you work with uh, shaders. Comparing to 3ds Max, it's quite similar. It looks like slate material editor. There is a system of instance materials when you create one and then basing on the first one you can create many more. What are the most common bugs that you've came across with in Unreal Engine? Well, there are many. <laughs> I noticed that even during my course that when you have a black object in your scene, it means that it's got its normals wrong. Before importing your scene into Unreal Engine, you have to optimize it and check the normals on your object. So you need to flip the geometry of the objects. Yes, yes. What else? It's hard to say. There are bugs when you have wrong geometry. Maybe you can remember a few more. I don't think it's worth talking about them. If they appear, they appear. Maybe when you have time, you can prepare a, an Instagram post about Unreal Engine bugs, because many of us come across them, but usually have no idea what to do with them. I'll think about it. I think it would be very useful for those who work in Unreal or are planning to work. It takes a long time to look through different resources and learn about bugs. And if that information was collected in one place, it would be great. And people ask about UV. Maps. It's hard to explain, it works very different. Tiling also has its own settings. I know it sounds scary, but it's quite straightforward. It's very, very logical. And I find it more comfortable than what we're used to. <laughs> Will you have any of your Unreal Engine scenes for sale in future? On the Unreal Engine market, there are many scenes for sale for architectural visualization. You can look through them and explore from inside. I don't plan to sell any of mine. I think it's a good idea. Mm, don't know. If I make something really good, maybe, but I find my work quite simple and don't see a point in selling it.
Баги, а не баги, я же говорю, столкнулся тогда уже надо их как-то решать. Ну, возможно, и так, да. Вот, а, не думаю, это нравится. Кстати, ребят, давайте действительно готовим тогда вопросы. Окей, so I'm going to read the questions and you can answer them now. Will you have a YouTube channel? I thought of making streams, but not in the closest future. How hard was it to switch from 3ds Max to Unreal Engine, comparing to other programs like ZBrush? It is like another world, but it's quite easy to switch. Because everything is very logical and for architectural visualization you don't need to know many of the buttons. At first, in my first week, I was thinking why the hell did I come here? And I thought I'm smart, I can deal with this. But then it got okay. How does Unreal Engine work with AMD cards? It's better not to have AMD card because it doesn't have RTX. I think that industry will switch to engines like Lumion, where we will depend on the render speed. <laughs> I saw a few works made in Lumen, but I think it was just a very skilled person who could create a good work on any engine. Lumen is quite popular already, but I never worked with it, so I can't comment on it. There is another one that is being used in Hollywood, it's called Arnold. I hadn't tested it, so I can't say anything about it, but I think that for architectural visualization we have enough engines already. There was a question about F-Storm. I did test it on my old graphic cards, 1050 Ti, and the render was quite long. I really hate the way their maps work, that you can't use a standard composite material and color correction. It feels like you need few weeks to get used to them, and it really put me off. If switching to something, I think it's worth switching to real time. It's a good advice. People say they would have individual lessons with you. I wish I had my own teacher. They say it's time to share your knowledge. Sometimes I have a thought that it's time to start doing something about it, but I can't yet imagine how it would look. I don't want to speak for a hundredth time about how to use 3ds Max in Corona Render. And telling about Unreal Engine, I don't have enough experience yet to answer all the questions. We talked about World Creator and that you use Phoenix. Yeah, I do. It's a software for simulations. It's from Chaos Group that owns V-Ray and also Corona. I can't say it's a very useful tool. They have a lot of tutorials and manuals, but without them, I wouldn't be able to figure it out. 
People are asking for a list of programs. I think I'm going to leave it with the stream when I upload it to my IGTV so that they can go there and get the whole list. What are the best schools to learn these programs? For Unreal Engine, I went to Architeach. It's very good for beginners. For architectural visualization, I would go to any big school. And the best learning is if you have a mentor and you can ask all of your questions. Something like tutoring would be perfect, but hard to find. So I would pick a big popular school. And how about CJ Incubator? Did it give you what you were looking for? It gave me a good system of my skills. It's never too late to learn. I think that when you reach a point when you think you know everything and you stop learning, it's like you're dead as an artist. I can understand. <laughs> understand you. <laughs> People are requesting an English version of this. What are you gonna do? Sorry, guys. How many passes do you need for one shot? What about the noise level? When you render a video, I think they mean corona render animation. I think I used to set 20 minutes per frame. I didn't even look at the passes. I had a small experience of making animation for a bedroom once. First, I was rendering through noise level and it was way too long. And then, like you, I switched to passes. There is a question about Blender. Is it the future? I still don't know why I'm not there yet, but I've heard many, many good feedback about it. Would you like to try games? No. Maybe if creating cut scenes. But no. A question on T-Flow. I think it's the best thing that has happened to 3ds Max in a long time. It's a very straightforward tool and there are many tutorials on it. And there is an amazing course from I forgot the name of the school. It's in English, but you can just repeat the buttons they use. They're asking about you using Fume FX or Phoenix. What was better? I used Phoenix for simulation. I think FumeFX is mainly used for fire simulation. 
вот реал тайм I would highly recommend using Ember again for real time. Еще раз, как называется? Ember again. Ember again? Да, да, да. Тоже, ребят, кто-то, кто кому не все равно, кому не тяжело, напишите, пожалуйста. How did you make your leaves animation? Там, где у меня листочки, так. Я делала это на Speed 3, именно сами... I made it using Speed 3. I made their a wind animation, and then I merged it with 3ds Max, and just did the rendering. Then I purchased GrowFX, and with this tool, animation takes like a second, if you've got Max 3 libraries. Using that, you can set animation of your wind. So if you want to use animation of the trees and the leaves in your scene, use GrowFX. Have you used the XGI lighting settings in Unreal Engine? I don't know what it is. Please call three of your favorite artists. Three is impossible. At least the ones you follow a lot. Допустим, если это в принципе артвиз и если это. Just first ones that pop up in your mind. Это джама. Первый на ум приходит джама. Это концептер самый известный. From the top of my head, джама Джурабаев. А допустим, если артвиз. For interiors, it's Vlada or Yaroslav Priatka. А если это if it's more wide and the guy who does everything it's Bartosz Tomicek there's another Polish artist Artur Tomola they connected and now they're creating something together. Is there a big request for animation? If you get an order where you are responsible for your short part of a big project, какой-то, не знаю, большой команды, то есть там интро делают одни люди, видео другие, ну такое живое видео. I would count the price per seconds. А секунды, ну у нас. And the average price is twenty to fifty dollars per second. Это будет, ну, понимаешь, такой разлет, но примерно такой он существует. Это секунда. I think those ones who render for a thousand dollars per picture are taking more, but regular artists, I think that's the price they take. They ask about cars modeling. No, I didn't create that model of the car. I built that scene over a weekend. Listening to you, everything seems too simple. It's hard to believe. 
Ну, ты жди не веришь, если честно, вот, да, вот слушаешь. И... Ну, действительно, значит талант, ну, как еще это объяснить? Я просто... I'm just very stubborn. I don't think it's talent. А нет, это, наверное, дело все-таки не упертости, а действительно, вот... Is it worth rendering using CPU? If you don't have other choice, it would be very fast, but it won't look good. People are talking about Substance Painter. Have you tried it? I did have a test scene in there. If you're not modeling for stocks, there is no point, really. Have you had any funny stories from your work? It's hard to remember. And what about negative experience? I had one, I don't even want to remember it. I think many of us had that situation when your clients didn't get the final renders and you didn't get your last payment. What happened? Was it their fault? There was a project of a house or an apartment. I submitted few rooms. Then I started making a main space of a kitchen and a living room. I sent previews. And there was no answer for about a month. I had 50% of the project paid. Then they said that this project is closed and if is it possible to take a part from your initial payment and use it for other projects. I definitely didn't want to give my first payment because I finished working on this project. How is your English? I dropped my studies a few months ago and now my level has dropped a bit. How do you have time for all of it? Don't know. I limit myself on social media. Sometimes it looks like I'm arrogant and I don't reply to messages. Once I started studying Unreal Engine, I dropped my English courses. Together, it takes too much time. I understand, after each stream I get lots of messages, but I've got a family, and I can't reply to all of them at once. We all have private lives. Why do you choose freelance over working in a studio? 
I've heard opinions on it on few streams, and I think they explain it pretty well. If you're a skilled artist with a good level, and you're earning less than you would earn in a studio, then you're doing something wrong. So everything comes to finances. I won't get paid as much in a studio. If I focus and concentrate, I can earn a lot. If I get some time to relax and make my own projects as I do now, I will still earn my thousand and and I'll be fine. In freelance, every month differs from the other. They say, Lisa, you do so much and I don't have as much free time left. There goes a swear word and guys, it's a cultural meeting, please. They're saying it's a very informative stream. Thank you. They're asking how much you're earning. I'm preparing my notebook. I need to look at it because I also do my taxes. In Russia we have a system that's called self-employment. It's the easiest way to pay tax. And you don't have to worry about big sums of money coming. If you get paid from body corporate, it's 6%. And from just PayPal, it's 4%. It's very small. Thank you. Thank you for the stream. I saw that on the peak we had 130 people. We've been talking over an hour. Please send a video of when your car falls in your scene. I'm gonna finish that. I'm gonna make it work. You say that a lot and then the next day you have your project finished and everything is perfect. Birds are flying. They're saying that you are so young and you know so much. Wishing you professional growth. Half of the comments is about how sweet you are. Are we going to finish now already? Don't you want to leave? I just feel like I haven't replied to all the questions. I scrolled through all of them. There are many with just thanks to you. They're asking to repeat shortly about what the stream was. We spoke about Unreal Engine, about landscape architecture. We spoke about which software 
is used for landscape visualization. I will save the stream and you can go back to it through my hashtag and my next stream is gonna be it's like in Marvel movies there is a, an important part at the end my next stream will be with Ruslan Prasvirin so who is interested come join us i think this is it thank you so much for coming and i think everyone enjoyed it as much as i did very interesting to hear of how you create your work with software you use you gave us a vision of where to go forward. I learned that it's better to start getting to know Unreal Engine from one of the schools because it's not as simple and you can just break your brains with it. How you create landscapes, it's also amazing that you don't need a composition or an idea from start. You can just sit with it, with your scene and test it. And also you gotta be talented for it. It was great to talk about software. Lisa, thank you again so much. It was amazing. Thanks for inviting me. I wouldn't do it on my own. I don't know why many guys say that, but their speech is great. The information they give is awesome. Very informative, so there's nothing to be scared of or feel uncomfortable. We're just chatting and sharing what we know. Thank you. Thank to everybody. You can DM Lisa and maybe she makes her own stream and answers your questions. It's better you invite me here again. So send lots of spam to Lisa if you want to see her again here. I think we'll meet again. I have an idea of creating Twitch. Maybe Discord. I don't know, I like Twitch more. We'll see. Who knows about it? You can contact me and teach me how to use it. So that we can get together in there, maybe play some games or have a discussion. Bye-bye!